How's it going guys, Hyper here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the speed kill strategy for the Coven of Shivara. I will also be giving you some DPS tips, but I am not parsing in this fight because of the job that I am doing. So on pool here, we have one of the tanks position as Sara to where she's exactly within cleave range of uh, Nora. So that means minimum range without them getting the, the damage immunity debuff. And this way, you can have fire mages and other classes cleave between the two bosses without much trouble. Once the tank positions her, you can have any taunt DPS, uh, either a DK, warrior, red paladin, you know, pretty much anything that has a taunt, you just taunt Asara and just hold her in place the entire time. That way, whenever the tanks have to swap on Nora, you don't have the bosses crossing each other over, becoming immune, so you can have much more uptime and the bosses never become immune throughout the fight. And also this helps with positioning because the bosses, since they never move, uh, they are always within that perfect range and they're exactly cleavable by like fire mages. Normally on this fight you will see mages go frost so they can ice lance cleave, but if you do this strategy then they're able to just cleave as fire because their ignite will spread and they will do some insane damage. Um, you will see at the end of this video our fire mages both got rank 1 and rank 2 on this fight. So of course, uh, as a Frost DK, if you're doing this, you will not be parsing because you're not able to cleave both bosses. Uh, but this greatly helps out the raid DPS and it will make your kill much smoother and much faster. So if you are looking to parse on this fight, I'll also give you a few tips. You want to position yourself halfway between the two bosses. That way you're cleaving them with Remorseless Winter. So that means max melee range from one of the bosses. Uh, as long as they're tanked properly, your Remorseless Winter will be hitting both of them. And then, if you tank the bosses in this position, like you see here, whenever the Flame Adds spawn, you're all also able to cleave onto them, so you're essentially hitting three targets instead of two. And that's just a lot of extra damage. Um, you want to keep maximum uptime on these bosses. You will see that there will be a new um, Storm coming out here soon, and I will not be moving the boss. I will just ask for an external and you know healers are just gonna heal me through it i'll help them out with ibf and whatnot uh but here whenever this army comes out you just have to trust that people who are doing ccs are doing their job and then you see here the storm coming out and i just ask for an external and they just keep me up through this it doesn't do too much damage as long as healers are focusing you so the reason you're able to tank asara is because all of her touches of darkness go on random targets so she essentially does zero damage to the tank unless you're of course uh, the random person getting picked but even if you are it doesn't do basically anything so you never have to worry about dying just because you're tanking her and that just leaves the other two tanks to do their own thing um so another parsing thing on this fight you want to of course make sure you drag in uh, as many targets as possible which on pull will be two targets so you want to cleave the bosses and then later on you will get your dragon up for the healing adds and you want to hit, at, if you can, you want to hit both bosses and the healing add with your dragon. But that's not always possible depending on the positioning. So here we just have lightning adds and at this point the main tank taunts Asara back and posi positions her over at the opposite lightning add so ranged and the melee DPS for on it can cleave. Uh, I was assigned to the orange ad here, so I, I was just DPSing that one. And then healing ads are about to come out and we position back towards purple. Now, at this point, you have a Sora and Dima down, so the tanks don't actually need to swap. And this is where we second pod, blow our cooldowns and just blow up this ad. So you'll see me get the dragon here, but it's not in range of that third ad. And the boss wasn't there, so I only hit two targets with it. Um, the, you can potentially hold it so you're on this second ad here and that way you might be able to hit four targets with it and the goal for th these ads is to kill two ads per cast so you see that they're casting that um the the thing that heals them back to full hp and puts a dot on their raid every cast you should be able to kill two ads as long as you split up the raid properly and now the boss is positioned the ads back here you have dima and tora uh, Tura again is a boss that you can tank as a melee without taking any damage, so I will taunt back here. 
but then the tanks decided that they're fine with uh, Dima just being held by one tank and getting freedomed. So at this point it doesn't really matter if you're the one holding the boss or the main tank. Um, just make sure someone has aggro on her. I held her here because I'm doing interrupts anyway, so I will be hitting her. Uh, but whenever you're not tanking the boss, just make sure you position halfway between them. And that's just so you get the remorseless uh, winter cleave. Um, right here, we're just interrupting and you can see that our multi-daughters and all the people who are cleaving are doing insane damage because of that great positioning where both bosses are, are kept within essentially cleave range for everyone. Uh, now we have new ads come out here. As you can see, we ignored the flame ads. We only cleared one side of the room because we knew we were finishing off the bosses. Um, and then the army comes out, we CC it. The tank actually uh, puts a ring of peace down and kills himself by mistake. So I just taunt the boss there real quick and we end the fight. So this fight is a lot of fun if you're able to do this strategy because the frustration on this fight mostly comes from them being immune and wasting global cooldowns into immune bosses is not fun. So let's pull up the rankings here. Uh, we had a 5 minute and 45 second kill time, which is rank 1. Um, and that is faster than pl second place, I believe, by about 12 seconds. So it was a pretty quick kill. And you can see that we had two rank 1 parses, a rank 2, and then a bunch of 99 percentiles. And I almost slipped into that orange category. But if you're tanking the boss, you're going to get dodged and parried. So don't expect to be parsing if you're doing the one doing the job of tanking. Yeah, guys, that was the speed kill strategy for Coven. I hope it helped. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.